April 2016 marked the 101st anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. It was important to ANC Australia and our constituent Armenian Australian citizens that we showed our spirit and drive towards justice for the Armenian Genocide will not relent after last year's centenary. On April 24th, over 3,000 Sydney Armenians marched from Hyde Park to the Royal Botanic Gardens, led by the Hobnetmen Marching Band, clergy, community leaders and the Armenian Youth Federation. And it will continue to be as strong as it is needed until 1.5 million victims of the first genocide of the 20th century are finally able to rest in peace. That evening, the National Armenian Genocide Commemoration Evening in Chatswood saw a packed venue hear from Professor Peter Stanley, who co-authored Armenia, Australia and the Great War, the first published account of Australia's relief effort aiding victims of the Armenian Genocide. Political leaders also pledged solidarity towards leading Australia to the recognition of the Armenian Genocide. The Armenian Genocide is also a part of Australia's Great War and that Vic and I have been able to throw up to remind Australians of something that most alive now have been aware of. We would like the genocide and its relationship with Australia to become recognised as a part of Australia's story of the Great War, as well as Armenians and the world's. The injustices that you have suffered and the recognition that you wish and the battle that you've had is also our battle. I will continue to do that. Again, I would like to emphasize the importance of acknowledging the genocide, how important it is for all our Armenians, the important for all of us. We must, we must recognize the Armenian genocide. Because we are seeing Armenians displaced from Syria. We are seeing Armenians being attacked by the Azeris in Nagar Karabakh, where I'd say. So the message that we must remember is just as relevant today, not just because those people who suffered 101 years ago should be remembered and should be part of our collective consciousness, but because what we face today as a world, and particularly what the Armenian people face, is a challenge which the world deserves and must support. In Melbourne, over 500 members of the community were treated to a lecture by the other co-author of Armenia, Australia and the Great War, Mr Viken Bapkinyan. On the 2nd of April this year, we woke to the news of the largest military escalation by Azerbaijan against the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh since the 1994 ceasefire. Over a four-day period, Azerbaijan unleashed tanks, missiles, drones and heavy armaments against the civilian population of Nagorno-Karabakh. Over this four-day period, over a hundred Armenians lost their lives. While our soldiers stood proudly defending our nation against the barrage of attacks being led by a warmongering dictator in Baku, our community once again raised its collective voice to ensure the rights of the people of Artsakh are heard loud and clear. We raised our voice of protest in front of the Azeri Embassy in Canberra. We raised our voice through the Australian mass media, and we raised our voice through the work of the Armenian Youth Federation of Australia, who educated the wider public. When we say Garapagomerne in Armenian, the native language of the Republic of Nagorno Garapal, that means Garapal is ours. This course of action resulted in our elected officials and bureaucrats in Canberra taking notice, which led to ANC Australia holding high level meetings with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, along with ambassadors of the OSCE Minsk Group countries. Advocating 
for the right to self-determination of the people of the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh remains at the forefront of ANC Australia's advocacy work. Throughout 2016, numerous members of both state and federal parliament addressed issues of importance to the Armenian community. Months ago, the federal member of Benelong, John Alexander, OAM, condemned Azerbaijan's aggression towards the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia and called out Azerbaijan's brutal human rights record. Last month, the Azeri government handed down lengthy prison sentences to outspoken human rights activists Leela and Arif Yunus in a prosecution described by Human Rights Watch as a despicable political show trial. Last week, the European Parliament passed a resolution to apply targeted sanctions and visa bans against Azeri officials and called on the government to release political prisoners. I also raised my strong concerns about Azerbaijan's actions in the ongoing dispute with Armenia in the Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan has invested over $1 billion in armoured vehicles and artillery in the past few years, making a mockery of any supposed desire for peace in the region. As we commemorate the centenary of the commencement of the Armenian genocide, it is essential for us as community leaders to call out persecution and to stress to trading partners like Azerbaijan the importance of protecting human rights and political freedoms for all. Senator Joe Bullock delivered one of the most powerful statements in the Australian Senate on Azerbaijan's brutality towards the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. He called out his fellow parliamentarian and mouthpiece for Azerbaijan, the now disgraced Luke Simpkins, by stating, to speak as the member of Cowan, Simpkins has repeatedly done in other places, House of Representatives, of the illegal occupiers of the nagorno karabakh region of Azerbaijan is ludicrous. How can a people who have lived continuously in this region for centuries illegally occupy their own land? In the late 1980s, with the emergence of perestroika and glasnost, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh began exercising their fundamental right to self-determination, calling for unification with Armenia. On the 20th of February 1988, the Karabakh National Council voted 110 to 17 to request the transfer of Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. This call was aggressively opposed by Azerbaijan, which rejected any transfer of territory. On the 23rd of February 1988, three days later, an Azeri mob killed 50 Armenian villagers in Askaran. On the 27th of February, an Azeri mob hunted down Armenians in the city of Sumgayat, raping and killing them. In January 1990, an organised pogrom against Armenians living in the Azerbaijan capital of Baku resulted in 90 dead and 700 injured. For Azerbaijan, the issue of Karabakh is a matter of ambition. For the Armenians of Karabakh, it's a matter of life and death. Joseph Goebbels may have notoriously preferred guns to butter, but the Australian government needs to take care that its efforts to increase exports of butter to Azerbaijan don't result in the Azerbaijanis more confidently turning their guns on the brave citizens of Nagorno-Karabakh. The pogroms of Sumgait and Bakul were remembered in New South Wales Parliament by Chair of Armenia-Australia Parliamentary Friendship Group, the Honourable Jonathan O'Day. In a similar vein, and but of more recent memory, many people mourn and honour the victims of the anti-Armenian Azerbaijani attacks in Sumgate and Baku from 1988 to 1990. The February 1988 anti-Armenian rallies through Azerbaijan gave way, gave way to waves of ethnically motivated violence, death and destruction. Consequently, Azerbaijan's Armenian community all but disappeared with thousands displaced, culminating in a war involving the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, otherwise known as Artsakh. I understand that war resulted in almost 30,000 dead on both sides. Hundreds of thousands of refugees were forced to flee their homes. To this day, justice and resolution continues to be sought on behalf of many of those who lost their lives or were displaced by this violence. Newly elected Member of Parliament and Member from McKellar stood in the Federal Parliament to mark a proud milestone for the Armenian-Australian community, the 30th anniversary of Goldstone College.
On the northern beaches, the Armenian community established a college to promote and preserve their culture and indomitable spirit. Galston College was recently recognised by the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority as having demonstrated substantially above average gains in NAPLAN results. September 2016 marked the 25th anniversaries of both the Republic of Armenia and the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. While some of us were lucky enough to be in the capitals of Yerevan and Stepanakert to join in the festivities, ANC Australia's work at home continued in Canberra, with an unprecedented three federal members congratulating our republics in Parliament. We thank Trent Zimmerman, Jason Falinski and John Alexander for their kind words and encouragement for our young and historic nations. Yeah, I rise to support the words of my friend and colleague, the member for North Sydney, delivered earlier this week in recognition of the 25th anniversary of independence for the modern Republic of Armenia. This event was celebrated across my electorate of Benelong, which proudly boasts the largest Armenian-Australian community in the country. On the 21st of September 1991, the Republic of Armenia was formed following a 99.5 per cent vote of the population for independence from the former Soviet Union. Within four months, Australia had recognised the new republic and established diplomatic relations. On the 21st of September this year, one of the world's newest and smallest nations celebrated its 25th year of independence. There are few nations who deserve to celebrate such an occasion more than Armenia. Armenia's capital is one of the oldest continuing inhabited cities in the world. It recently celebrated its 2,798th anniversary, and Armenia was the first Christian kingdom in the world. It was on this historic day 25 years ago that the Armenian people boldly and with near unanimity voted yes to secure their independence from the yoke of the Soviet Union. After seven decades of Soviet rule, the Armenian people vowed to proudly stand on their own two feet and to walk ahead as an independent nation with a new sense of purpose and belonging. The path to independence for the Armenian people has not been an easy one. We also thank Jonathan O'Day for rising in the New South Wales Parliament to mark the 25th anniversary of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh.